So my mic is muted. Well, you guys, I'm really nailing it today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we started with um, a light turquoise color, which I'm so washed out. I haven't figured out how to make this less washed out. Let me see if I can turn it down. I'm so sorry. This is totally weird. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so we have a, Teresa, can you hear me now? Is the sound better? I'm hoping we're, I'm hoping we're on now. And my colors seem to be semi better, but still a little bit weird. Wow. Okay, so light te light teal or light turquoise and then a dark uh, mermaid tail teal on top. And I just kind of blended it in right through here and left this other section paler. Okay, so we're going to call that good for a minute. I'm going to just offload some of the excess paint from my brush and rinse it in my paint water. Give that brush a quick dry. And now for fun, I'm going to grab some this deep purple color here. It's a violet, and I'm gonna kind of create a purple violet border right here. And then we'll create a second one, kind of right at the top of that, but thinner. So I'm taking the square brush, and I'm gonna use the long edge of it to kind of pull a line, sort of a subtle line right across the top. Okay, I'm so glad it's better. Thank you, Teresa. Usually I use multiple cameras and all this stuff and I was trying to get to go live on Instagram and Instagram didn't want to work, but I say every day I turn around, they're changing something on Facebook and all these things. And so maybe I can paint, but sometimes the tech just gets the better of me. Okay. So it's a very subtle purple line and it just kind of helps create that sort of cap and horizon line for, for the water. So this blue section is the water and we're keeping it real skinny because you have all this land and all this sky. So offloading some of that purple paint onto just some surface, again, just to kind of keep my rinse water a little less crazy. So tell you, all that pigment from your brush gets in your rinse water and then goes down your drain and then maybe clogs your drain. So the less that goes down, the longer your drains will last. <laughs> Isn't that awful? All right, so gonna grab some of this orange. It looks like peach. Hopefully it'll come out a little bit closer to orange. Yeah, so just grab yourself the brightest orange. It can even be kind of a pinky orange. I'm gonna drag it just right along that border where the purple is. Maybe even allowing it to kind of touch. There we go. Just kind of streak back and forth. Get a good, get a good coating here. And then for fun, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow in here. No rinsing your brush, just grabbing that yellow and kind of going. There we are. I'm going to pull a little bit more of the orange in just to kind of get a little extra blend there. That's better. There we are. And from here, I'm going to offload some of my paint just because I've got a, a lot of paint kind of forming like right at the right at the edge of the ferrule. It's creating kind of a gloppy mess and we just don't need glop. I'm not going to bother rinsing though. But from here, we'll grab some, some white with my sort of yellowy orangey brush. And I'm going to take it right into some of that yellow. And the idea is that we're just blending that last bit of pigment kind of up into the sky here. And now that I've kind of laid a base of white, actually I'll get all the way to the top with the white. And notice it's pretty white at the top. Oh, man, this webcam is fired. It's just washed everything out. These are such beautiful, vibrant colors and it looks totally flat. Oh well. So no rinsing my brush. I still have the white on. I'm going to grab some purple and I'm just going to kind of drag right along the edge here. Actually, maybe I'll shimmy it just kind of right along the edge here and get some of that purple blending down into the yellow. The reason I have all that white is so that we don't just get mush when I take some of that purple into the yellow. The white is going to help kind of mitigate 
the motion of color. All right, so you can kind of see it. What else can I do? This color is like, I mean, look at me, I look pasty. That is insane. I don't care about me, but when you can't see my paint, oh, mom gets annoyed, right? It's like, I want to share. Okay, I'm going to grab some white and just do a little bit of blending. There we go. So that creates kind of a subtle, a subtle framing at the top. What can I do? Better lighting? Nope, that makes it worse. Less lighting. Hmm. Okay. All right. So we've kind of got a real base for a sky. Um, and now we want to get a little bit of this sort of sand color. But, you know, in the dark, sand tends to be, well, dark. So I'm going to grab more of the purple. I haven't bothered to rinse. And I'm just going to bring the purple down. Purple, uh, oh, I'm just going to take a big old hunk of purple, in fact. And just mush it on down. This sort of violet color, and this is the Liquitex Basics, oh, excuse me, Artist Loft um, Violet. So it's a nice dark purple. It looks like straight up grape on camera, but it's actually pretty, pretty good deep. You know, another color that you could use, if not that, is like a dioxazine. But generally, most colors that have violet or a dark violet are going to do the trick. It just makes such a wonderful kind of shadow tone. Instead of using black all the time, because black just is going to be absence of color, sometimes you can get a, a, a lot more depth and sort of richness when you use something other than black. Okay, so now we have sort of a purple base. Um, and now just to mix it up, I'm going to offload some of that color because I've got a lot of extra purple on my brush. No rinsing, no. You can rinse if you want, but I'm not. I'm going to grab some of my orange. I know that seems crazy, but I'm going to start to work the orange gently over the top of that purple. Now, this is a very ready orange. It's not a dull orange. It's a very bright orange. So it tends to pick up, it tends to actually kind of lay right on top of that purple. And I'm not getting like full coverage here, but just kind of some nice streaky bits. And so now it looks as if that sunset is kind of leaving beautiful Beautiful marks on our sand. You see how we've got this kind of variegated look? Hey, Pat, how are ya? Okay, so now we've got sort of the sand, but it's in the purples and the dusky colors. Um, and then the, sort of the sky plus, plus the water. So again, offloading my paint. I'll give it a quick rinse because I want to bring more of that um, mermaid tail or deep teal into the picture. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the deep teal kind of right here at the border of the purple. And just kind of grab some of the turquoise as well. So it has a, it's a better blending factor. And you want it to be a little bit streaky and stripey. So not solid, but kind of variegated there. That, that's really up the intensity. That, that makes me happy. And of course, color is and painting is all about making you happy. And then if we want to just amp a little tiny bit of the purple, again, right along that edge, but allowing it to kind of blend, blend a bit with your, with your teal turquoisey colors. There we are. All right. Offloading. Again, just get rid of the excess paint. Um, now I kind of want to let this dry, but just for fun, we're going to add a little bit of a more intensity in the sun area here and then give it a bit of an aura. So I'm going to grab a quinacridone magenta. And instead of having the sunset straight in the middle, because, you know, that's not always fun, I'm going to take it slightly off to the side. So here we go, just kind of creating like a, just a, almost a half moon or a little orange slice there. And it's deep, deep magenta red. It's a nice, intense color. And Aquiticridone itself, it's a really like, it's this beautiful magenta color. Like it's got to be one of my favorites. Um, and it mixes with a lot of these other colors just in such a beautiful way. I mean, you mix it with teal, deep teal and you get 
you can pretty much mix this same color of purple. It's like, wow. You, know, you mix it with some various like, um, what was the color? It was, there was some version of red that I was able to mix it with that just made this intense, gorgeous pink. I mean, it's, it's weird. It's like straight up weird. Okay. So enough about clinicrit and magenta. Um, but so we've got that. Okay, good. Now I've got some turquoise in my brush, so I need to get rid of that before I, I start making purple in places. I don't want purple. And now I'm going to attempt and see what happens here to mix a little bit of this orange a little bit of the clinicrit on. Now, it's probably hard to tell, but this is in fact a fluorescent orange I've got going on. Oh, Pat, I'm so glad you love the colors. Me too. Okay, so this mix I've created, now again, it's very, very washed out on my palette, um, but it's a very electric kind of color. So I'm going to just grab a little bit of it, but it's also the beauty of the quinacridone and some of the fluorescence is that they're fairly translucent, so they don't give you a thick coating, which in this case is kind of nice. So I've intensified a little bit around that sun and then grabbed just some of the straight up orange and we'll do a little blending. So we kind of want a little, little extra happening there, a little intensity. And maybe a touch of yellow just to kind of help blend at the top. And then maybe even a touch of white just to, again, kind of add a little extra. Whoops, got a little too orangey over there, but I think we can get away with that. Yeah, so you can kind of see the colors. All right, I'm going to break out the blow dryer super fast and give this guy a good a good, you know, dry so that we can do some layers here because there's a couple of things where I don't want to be dragging multiple colors around. So quick. I think that covers us. And now just to keep going kind of with the fun. Again, I'm still using my half inch square brush or flat brush, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to dip it into my orange and I'm going to actually kind of just place little orange bits in the water, kind of clustered near that sun. Oh, that is not showing at all. Let's see, if I bring it closer, will you be able to see it or will it just be this washed out? Okay, but you can kind of see it. Oh yeah, yeah, technology. So again, if you want to just kind of place pieces in here and so that we're going to allow like the thickest part of it to be right where the sun is. And then um, we'll keep going with that. And then start to kind of have a few pieces that kind of branch out away from it. But really the majority of the intensity is going to be occurring right where that sun is. It just kind of makes it look like we're catching some sun on the water. And your lines don't have to be perfect and flat. You can kind of wiggle them, drag them a little, but I find even just leaving like the tip of the brush print like whoop, right on the canvas is, is pretty effective. Again, you guys, I have I apologize for my weird lighting. I've turned it down. I've warmed it up. I've tried to do all the things which normally work, but today it's like, eh. That or it's just my computer screen confusing me. I don't know. Okay. So since I'm here, I'm going to grab a little bit of the white and do kind of a mix to go with a lighter tone, grabbing some of that orange and white. Now, if your orange and white mix looks too like peachy colored, um, you could always grab a little bit of the magenta and mix it in to kind of pink it up or just modify it a little bit. And you can kind of place some of those little, a couple more reflective, reflective tones in your water there. Now, if you're a mixed media person, you could even mess around with stencils. Although, honestly, I would have done the stencils much earlier. I'm just getting kind of some 
texture in the water. And it's very, very simple. It's hard to see. I'm so sorry. Again, okay, here we are. Right there. It's kind of there. That's well, kind of it. And so again, if you want to keep going with that, you could add some yellow. Although you probably want to mix the yellow and the white together because, you know, yellow never shows up well by itself. So a little yellow-white mix will make it much more thick and gooky so you can kind of place some... Does that show? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Finally, something that shows on camera. Little bits of yellow here. Am I closer to that? Will that do a thing for us or no? Oh, yeah, maybe. I'm just gonna stay on camera. Okay. And a couple little bits along here. All right, so we got some color. And for my inner circle folks, I'm going to be doing a variation on this with a little bit more going on. But I figured we could just, you know, show up here and have some fun and just do something kind of quick. And I don't know, I'm starting to get all the emails from the school about how, you know, like last chance for yearbooks and all the testing is coming. And pretty soon we have to turn in the instruments. And I'm like, where did the school year go? Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm still a little in shock. Okay, so I'm gonna give this guy a rest for now. We may come back and add some purple, but let's do, let's do a thing. It's a little weird. And Inner Circle folks, you're gonna see this again because it's kind of cool. So I grabbed some deep teal, mermaid tail, my favorite. You could also use the Deco Art Americana peacock teal. It's just a little bit down from intensity from the mermaid tail but it will still absolutely do the trick and it's usually much easier to find and you can get it in big old vats. And you know, if you paint with me a lot, big old vats might be appropriate. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab some of the mermaid tail teal, smush it over here and I'll grab a hunk of yellow and I'm gonna mix it a sort of a turquoisey green. All right, that's actually showing up. Now what you're seeing on camera, at least from my perspective, is a whole lot lighter than what I've got. Mine's, a, mine's more intense. And so as weird as this sounds, we are gonna draw a palm tree in this bright green, despite the fact that what we have here is dusk. Work with me. This is a multi-layer thing. So we'll start kind of creating kind of these, almost like, well, we'll just do some triangle type. Actually, let me just do the rough form of it. Here we go. So I kind of sketch, then I know I'm gonna have the, the fronds coming down like so, or maybe one here, and then kind of a little guy sticking up. All right, so that's the rough shape of it. So now we'll go ahead and fill it in. So you can almost do just kind of these triangle shapey things that are almost like pointing up along the along the, the stem. Because yeah, I think palm's actually a grass, but you know what I'm saying, along the trunk. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. So what we're doing is we're setting the undertones. So I'm gonna kind of get the green shape and then maybe bring some, some fronds down so when you're doing a palm leaf, for the most part, the fronds, they kind of do this, right? They don't stick out in all directions. Like I know we think of a palm frond and we always think of the stuff going off on like both sides, but in fact, when it's hanging off a tree, all the fronds are hanging down. So we'll allow for it to be a lot smoother kind of along the top. And then we'll allow the fronds to kind of come down at the underneath. Again, kind of here and maybe overlap a little over the ocean since what we have is a, a tree that's in front of us. And I know this green is weird and it's washed out and it's okay. It's an under layer. So work with me here. Maybe a little guy here that kind of comes up. I don't know what he's doing. He's gonna splay out in both directions because he's a little confused. It's okay to have the occasional confused palm frond, right? I think so. Now, if, you're, if your greenish tone is a little bit more tealy than green, that's also okay. If I'm doing this right, I'm kind of painting it half upside down, half sideways. I'm going to come in with and grab some of that just straight up teal and start to add some of the teal. And what this is going to do, this extra color and these layers, it's going to add some depth and it's, it's going to kind of sneak some color into the shadows when you least expect it. Um, it won't necessarily be dominant, but it's just going to add that little, ooh, and, you know, if y'all paint with me long enough, you're like, yeah, Wendy likes that little bit of, ooh. Okay. 
So you see, I just kind of layered some of that turquoise, almost like right on top, just kind of around the green. Again, still not our main color. Like, that doesn't make sense in a dust thing, but it's okay because we're not done. But wait, there's more. All right, I'm going to break out the blow dryer and give it a quick blast so we can keep layering because we are going to be doing a lot of work right in here. A lot of work. Good enough. So remember our friend, the purple, we're going to grab some of that purple and just break it out over here. Oh. Let's see what happens if I mix some quinacrid on in. Well, that's pretty. I'm going to grab a little bit of the teal and mix it in with the quinacrid on. Look at that. Boom. Yeah, that gives us a nice kind of navy, navy purple. Yeah, that darkens it a lot. Okay. So this has just gotten a bit more intense. I started with the purple base, but I just added the quinacrid on. And I'm gonna kind of go over roughly, you know, where that palm tree is, oops, allowing some of the green to peek out behind it, but kind of kind of redoing it. But having that little bit of green, it just adds some extra dimension. Because you know your eye, despite the fact that it's dark, it still either sees colors or thinks it sees colors. And so that's kind of what we're what we're channeling here. Oops. There we go. And so we'll kind of take that purpley color. I don't know, this seems sort of weird, but you know, I was messing with this the other night, after last night, I guess, and a couple more things we'll throw in, but I was really happy with that with the end results. And yes, we will eventually use some black. But I know you don't come to me for like super basic, simple stuff. You come to me because you want to play a little bit and add it just a touch of surprise. So that's what we're doing. We're adding the touch of surprise. Oh, cat, are you on the counter? I need like a spray bottle. It's like, oh, mom's on camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go misbehave right now because there's nothing she can do. Right, so again, just layering that purpley color on top of our greens and our turquoise teal and just kind of, all right. So now it's starting to add some depth, but you also notice like because the sun is behind it and it's shining through those little bits, there's still some color in there. And so it's almost like the light that from the sunset is catching it just a smidge. Okay, here we go, wiping the paint off our brush. All right, here's the surprise trick. I'm going to come back in with some of that that fluorescent or bright orange. I'm going to kind of just add a little a little edge. Little just kind of those the lines, almost like we did on the water, right along the this side of the tree. I'm not sure that you can see it from here, but it is there. And then I'm going to actually also take a couple of make a couple of orange fronds hanging down and these ones and kind of popping out here and there just little bits and these ones we're going to allow to kind of show through and again they just kind of bring that little bit of of like electric i don't know it's the boom factor right Again, with the sun peeking through, there's color, there's vibrancy, and that's what we're trying to capture here is the vibrancy. So we could even add a little bit of that orange kind of at the bottom of each of the triangles for our tree here. Bunk. All right, we're getting there. So now it's it's starting to look a little bit alive and a little bit lit up like from behind. Offload, offload, offload. I'm gonna blow dry it again. I know. This is one of my favorite tools. All right, that gets it on its way. One more time into the yellow and white. And you want it to be a lightened yellow, right? You really do want that white to be in there. That's important. We're going to add just a few 
a few bits peeking out. And in some cases, it's going to be super subtle and you're not really going to see it. A couple spots down here, especially as we're kind of into the one or two fronds popping up just kind of willy-nilly. You've got to have a little willy-nilly here. Again, it's just catching the light. this paint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rinse this guy and I'm going to I'm going to step down to a smaller, slightly smaller round brush. What do we got here? Honestly, I'm going to go with a uh, Oh my gosh, I got 10,000 steps. Like stop the world, something I've had 10,000 steps. All right, here we go. So we have a, ooh, very bright. So this is like actually a medium to large round brush that we're going for here. And we are finally, after all this, gonna grab a little bit of black. So grabbing some black. And, ooh, that is still a little wet, but it's okay. So I'm not doing full triangles here, but I'm kind of getting some, dabs kind of right in that triangle, kind of triangle shaped to sort of add the final bit of darkness. Like here's the deepest of the shadows where, you know, kind of no light is going. And so I just kind of did blop, blop, blop. And, you know, you can almost see sort of the seams and the in-between spaces. And if it feels too, too spaced out and like there's too much green between these pieces, you can always add just a touch more of the black to kind of fill it in. Now I'm going to kind of come out and start to add the fronds, kind of creating the line across here a little bit more. And you can see how there's some of the lighter fronds. Maybe you can see. Let's try this again. Um, so it's right here. We have the dark. And then while it's sort of hard to see from this camera angle, because when we shoot, the sky looks white, but it's like orange. Um, the little bits of orange and the lighter colors are, are actually popping out. So I promise you, when I photograph this later and show it, um, you guys will be like, oh, that's what she meant. And so again, I apologize for having such a washed out, such a washed out broadcast. Like this is, this is kind of crazy. Well, I know, I saw somebody do this earlier. I wonder if that would work. Look at that, you saw my sky for a minute. Maybe that worked. I don't know. All right. So just kind of getting a little flex of, of black. And then let's see here. Do this one some more. The occasional one that kind of pops out because that one's kind of pointing down. So you can see that sort of coming out from both sides. And we get this guy here. Again, he's kind of pointing up. So most of his fronds will be hanging down. So I'm keeping a really light, light brush strokes here. And you notice it kind of comes out and it curves. You want to always think about like it has some structure, but then it can't support its own weight. So it starts to sag. And that's kind of what those, those palm fronds are doing. I always find it so much easier to emulate nature when I'm like thinking about like, well, what is it doing? What is gravity doing to it? What effect is light having on it? Where's my light coming from? And so a backlit thing like this, you know, we generally like to think of it as just plain black. And that would be, you know, that would be sort of the, the simple, the simplified version of it. Um, but if you want it to have that like electric, like woo quality, that's when all the layers that we just put in, even though it's a little bit extra work and a few more steps, like really makes a difference. Like I look at this, I'm like, but that's so pretty. Okay. And so we now have, you know, a basic palm tree, right? Um, I got a lot of black going on here. And so I was figuring that we would just do a simple palm tree on, on sand. I feel like my sand's a little bit dark. So I think I'm going to grab, I'm going to try something here. Instead of having sand colored sand, because why would you do that? <laughs> Let's do a lighter purple. So grabbing some white, grabbing some my premix purple here. 
violet -y color. I'm going to kind of add some. Oops. Some other zones. Just kind of. I'm just trying to keep it interesting. So a little bit along here. Now, this is where it gets a little complicated, and I probably should have gotten gotten this background color just exactly right before doing the palm tree because trying to then come around the palm tree and get right up to it with the color is a little bit awkward but that's okay but yeah okay i'm liking that when it's just lightened up a little bit it's a little bit too light in some spots so i'm going to grab some purple and drag it through but i do love the bits of orange but yeah i think that lightens it kind of it's a better balance. And so, you know, if you've sat like on the beach at sunset and kind of watched the sun go down and, you know, prayed to see that green flash, which I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I believe the green flash actually exists. All right, here we're going out on a limb. I'm gonna grab some quinacridone and just work a little bit of that in. Should blend nicely with the bits of white. Add a little bits of richness here and there. And I'm going for more of that straight purple the deep violet going to just kind of come right up that base of that tree because we want to anchor the tree in violet or even your violety blue which is maybe your teal and your magenta mixed together now there's magenta and there's magenta right so i have here the artist loft brilliant magenta which is to my eye it's the most corally magenta i've ever seen it's almost like a, a pinky red um and then you have the quinacridone, which is just, it's super, super deep, and it looks very washed out here. But some of the other photos I've posted, you can see the intensity of this thing. Um, so, you know, just because something says magenta doesn't mean, it's, oh, I got orange. Well, okay, let's go with it. Whoops. All right, well, so we're going to work some orange in because I accidentally got it on my brush. Why not? That works. That totally works. All right. See, even screw ups can turn out okay. And because we've kind of got a blendy, blendy bunch of colors going on here anyway, we can get away with it. There we go. That's better. Okay. So really what I've done is I've just tried to add a little bit more depth and darkness to the base where the palm tree is sitting so that it doesn't look like this thing that's just sort of popped out of this, this like light stuff. That's a little weird, right? So here it's got a little more gravity. And if I wanted to even add just a touch of black kind of around it to even just add a little little texture to the ground because that's kind of our foreground and just kind of even some streaky bits. It also adds a lens a little gravity and you know, it kind of anchors it because it otherwise it could seem top heavy. And if you wanted you could even bring little bits of black out you know along here and just kind of but we want to think of it in terms of balance. You have the big thing kind of going this way and you have another visual anchor here. And so this just helps almost like as if this it just keeps this thing from emotionally, mentally, whatever, tipping over for lack of a better term. So I hope you had fun doing this. I think that's, you know, pretty much a, a good, a good stopping spot. If you wanted to, Oh, Hey, let's do this just for giggles. Um, we need a small, we're going to add a couple of dots because dots are fun and dots are weird and dots sometimes add this crazy bit of texture that just take it to the next level. So I'm looking for a brush that has a smaller tail. So this brush here has a small tail, right? I'm going to just dip it straight in the white and oh yeah, I'm going to just come in here and add a couple of rando white dots, just kind of mix them in in spots where it's just almost, so I gotta keep it small. Some of my dots are a little bit big. It almost looks like snow, but hopefully it kind of adds that little bit of sparkle and like having caught the light somewhere. Sort of the serendipitous extra bit. In a few spots, you might want to put the dots, you know, side by side, but not all of them. You don't want to create a pattern, right? You want to be really cognizant of that. I'll put one here and then maybe a second one next to it. And one here at the base. And I think I have one out here. Kind of just sitting. 
And so there, it's really, oh, you yeah, don't see it at all. Okay, there, you can kind of see it. It's, I don't know why, but I feel like it just adds a touch of, a touch of twinkle, a touch of something. And if you're feeling really frisky, you could even, you know, splatter paint on this, which I know sounds weird. And sometimes it's like, oh, but I'm going to ruin my painting. And sometimes that splatter of paint is kind of amazing. But I already kind of semi-wrecked my phone yesterday from splattering paint. So I'm going to take a break from splattering paint today. Anyways, I hope you've had fun with this. Make sure you sign your artwork. And um, if you like this or had fun, please make sure that you're following and that you share, you like, all the good things, let your friends know. And if you're interested in getting on the wait list for the Blue Cat uh, VIP membership, it's our inner circle where you get access to all the tutorials I do. And I'm coming out with a whole handful of them, plus my entire prior library of the stuff that people have been paying for, as well as the free stuff. Um, just let me know in the comments you can write. Um, you can, you can write list and I will just reach out to you and we'll make sure that we get you on the wait list so that you know when we when we open doors again. And um, yeah, that's kind of where we're doing all the really serious good paintings, tutorials, with the tracers, all the stuff. So love you guys and I will see you next time. Have a great one. And let's see, here we go, technology.